Hello there, welcome back. Here we are again on another episode of Pimp My Filter and in this episode we're going to be looking at the Aqua One Aquis 1250 Series 2 canister filter. Just a quick few notes about this filter. It's got see-through sides so you can see if your trays are fitting together properly. And I can see one of those ones isn't fitting together very well. The trays are a decent size. The filter is really well made. Even the plastic feels good quality on it. It's just a really well made filter, but unfortunately it doesn't make full use of the space in here. And I'll show you why in a second when we pull it to bits. Okay, let's take a look in here. Now that's where water comes in, travels down the pipe to the bottom of the filter and then rises back up through the trays, gets sucked out by the pump, blown back to your tank. And this is not necessarily how it comes set up from Aqua One, but this is how it has come set up to me. We've got some Aqua One ceramic rings. They're actually quite good, those rings. If you're gonna get any ceramic rings, get the Aqua One version of them because they're quite light, very porous. They're actually a good ring. And then in here, we've got another sort of ring. I'm not quite sure who makes those ones. They will come in useful, just not in the top tray. Another tray with a few rings and something that looks like maybe is a sintered glass media called grow stones. Very light. I think it's possibly grow stones, although I'm not sure. Yeah, it feels very, very soft. I think that's grow stones. I'll go into those in a different video. They're not a bad media, but again, they've got limitations. We will use some of that stuff. And then in the bottom, we've got a reasonably coarse foam, and underneath that, we've got a very coarse foam. Okay, and in the very bottom of that filter, hopefully you can see that the trays actually sit on these little fins here. Hope that comes out on film. But that is about two inches up off the bottom. So effectively, you're wasting two inches in the bottom of your filter. And because we don't like to waste any space in the bottom of the filter, we're gonna use the old ceramic rings in the bottom of here. Basically, we're gonna pour them in until they come up to just below the level of the support. So there'll be approximately an inch and three quarters of rings right across the bottom of this filter. And what that'll do, it'll settle the really heavy muck. So the bottom of your filter will be absolutely filthy when you come to clean it out. But that'll do a really important job. It'll help to save the foams. If you can settle out heavy muck in the bottom of your filter, your foams will go a little bit longer before they need to be cleaned out. So you can extend the cleaning times. Now, if these things are grow stones, I don't really want these in the filter because they tend to raise the pH, which is good for Malawi cichlids, um, good for live bearers, good for goldfish, and basically any fish that likes a high pH, but it's not good for most tropical fish. So I'm gonna leave those out and just go with the rings in the bottom of here. Now, I wonder whether I can get that whole tray's worth of stuff in the bottom of there. That'll be interesting, if I can. You know what, I think that's just about done it. Let's bring the camera in for a close look so you can see exactly what's going on. There you go, looking through the side, you can see all of that media in the bottom of there. That represents the space that would normally be wasted in this filter. Our tray sits on top of here, so you've still got a little bit of gap underneath the tray, and our water's gonna come down into here, and this is gonna act as a real excellent primary settlement area. The water is going to be directed all over the place through these various rings and the heavy muck is going to settle in there. And that gives us two media trays free. We'll get to those in a second. First of all we're going to concentrate on the foam tray. Right, remember that this foam tray goes right in the very bottom of our filter. 
that's actually pretty good as a course pad. I'm going to keep that and I'm going to use that as the course pad. Hasn't got the dimples on, it's not really going to matter. The next one up, the medium pad, is going to have the dimples on. We'll not be using that one. I'll send that one back to Daniel. He might be able to use it for something. So in here, we're going to drop our course pad back in. This is still wet, you know. I wish I had smell-o-vision because this filter absolutely reeks now. But it's good look. So that's the course pad in the bottom. On top of there, we're going to cut out a medium density pad and we're going to put that bumpy side down. That'll create voids between here and here. That'll collect a hell of a lot of muck in those voids and it also gives us a lot of surface area for the water to hit. So it does a good job of cleaning. And where we've got the pipe going through this foam, we're not going to try and cut a little round hole, we're just going to put a cross in there to allow the pipe to poke through. So that's for the pipe, put little bits to take out there. our coarse and medium foam in and on top of there we're going to put a fine pad so the water is going to come up and go coarse medium fine all of our mechanical filtration will be done in the bottom third of the filter and with the fine pad you normally don't need to cut it around these little handles here you can just kind of fluff it up and rip it up a little bit. That's a good fit in there. Those forms fit in there perfectly. Look at that. Bang on. So we'll just make sure that rubber seal is sitting nice and flat on the pipe there, which it seems to be, and we'll drop this into the bottom of the filter. And now that just leaves us two media trays. I'm guessing each one is about a kilo and a half of Biohome Ultimate, but we'll weigh it out just to check. Wow, that took more than I thought. I was expecting it to take about a kilo and a half. It's actually taken 1.9 kilos, and that's just put in loosely. If you packed it in a little bit more tightly, and in fact, there's, yeah, there's more room. You could probably get almost two kilos in one of these trays. So this filter will hold almost four kilos of media. Got both of those filled there. Now all we do is just drop them back into our filter. So there we go goes back on the top and jobs are good. See that we've got a really cracking settlement area there. Foams in that tray so that's all of our mechanical filtration done in the bottom. We've got biological media and then biological media so there's a lot going on in here. Now the acid test can we actually get the top on and get it clamped down? It's looking good, it's looking good. No problem. Now I've just gone online to check what Aqua One say about this particular filter and the size of tank that it's recommended for. And they're actually underselling it. They say it's suitable for tanks of around 250 litres. We've just got close to four kilograms of media in there. So in essence, this filter is suitable for a normally stocked tank of around 400 litres. And that's for a full cycle. That's for a 
you know, zero ammonia, zero nitrite, and low nitrates. A full cycle, 400 litres, and they're saying 250. That's the first time I've ever seen a manufacturer undersell their filter. This is a good filter. And I've just been having a look at the cost of these as well. And they're around about 100 English pounds, which is maybe, I don't know, 115, 120 US dollars. That is a really good price for this filter, especially when you can set it up like that. Every bit of that filter now is being used to make the water good for the fish. It's a really, really good filter, very well made, and it doesn't waste any space. Well, it doesn't waste any space when we put the rings in the bottom. If we had that two inch gap in the bottom, I would say it was wasting quite a lot of valuable space, but how we've got it set up there, not wasting any space at all. So that makes a change. It's a filter that I would wholeheartedly recommend. It's definitely a good one. And Eheim aren't gonna like this, but I think the plastic that this is made of, the fittings, the quality of the trays is better than the new Eheims. I was a little bit disappointed with the new Eheims. They certainly have a lot of features. They're very popular, but they're not made as well as this. This is a cracking filter. And if you're in the UK and you also have a filter you'd like me to check out, by all means get in touch. My contact details are in the video description and also in the pinned comment below. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.